All right, so we're going to take a look at a, I guess, an obvious example to consider, which is a circle. Circle of radius r. How much curvature does a circle of radius r have? Um, now, before we dive in, um, there are obvious issues with this curvature calculation, right? Um, we, we've seen when we're looking at, you know, calculating the unit tangent and normal vector, like computing the unit normal vector is awful. Usually calculating this t prime is, is a terrible calculation. Um, also, uh, you know, if you're given a curve, you know, a vector valued function that is not parameterized using arc length, coming up with the arc length parameterization is also really hard to do. Like, um, Working from this, this kind of definition of curvature is it's, it's awful in a lot of practical situations. Um, and, and so, of course, what you do is you, you use the definition to derive formulas that can be applied um, with the information you're typically given, which is, you know, maybe a graph, maybe a plane curve, a par parametric plane curve, right? Uh, where t is probably not the arc length parameter, right? A space curve given by a vector valued function taking values in R3. And in each case, there are these, these nice formulas that work out. And you can sort of see the relationships between them. Um, you know, uh, if you think about the, the difference between like, for example, arc length for, for a graph versus arc length for a parametric curve, um, you can maybe see some, some relationships here. Uh, also think about computing like second derivatives for, you know, like calculating d squared y dx squared. Uh, when uh, when you have a parametric curve, and you can you can sort of see how these two fit together. Bit of playing around, you'll see how it works. Um, if you take this formula here for a space curve, you know if you think about like if I if I set the z component equal to zero, right, and I calculate the cross product, well, there's only going to be one component in that cross product, and it's going to look just like this, right? Um, and so if you think about a plane curve as like a space curve where the z component is zero, then yeah, those, those two fit together. Um, getting this calculation to work out. Now these two, if you go back and you look at kind of the, in the previous section, if you look at the results um, on acceleration, you'll see how these two fit together. It's not that bad. Um, getting from here to there, now that is a mess. Um, I was playing around, I was trying to decide, do I, is that something I want to show you in a video? So I played around with it for a little while and decided, no, it's, it's not. Um, this part here, right, getting from here to there, that's, that's essentially chain rule. It's chain rule and properties of the, of the, uh, the magnitude, basically. Um, and then you kind of, you know, you get to, okay, well, I got to calculate this T prime, right? And so what you do is you'd write, um, you'd write T as, you know, um, r prime over the magnitude of r, and then you take the derivative of that thing, right? In general, you just work out the derivative in general. What does it look like? Um, and, and you work through the details, and you calculate that all out, and then you're going to have to compute a magnitude. And, and then you do this cross product, and you compute the magnitude, and you compare the two, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a whole lot of really messy algebra, but it does work out. Um, there is probably a more clever way to do it um, that I, I couldn't think of, but you know, it, it's doable. Um, in this case, we're gonna look at the second one because we wanna find the curvature of a, of a circle. It's a plane curve, fits this scenario here, right? Um, we don't wanna get an arc length parameterization. We don't wanna go through any of that, although to be honest, this one is not so bad. Um, this is, this is a constant speed parameterization for the circle, so we would just have to adjust the size of the constant. Um, but let's apply the formula here. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and compute, right? So, so x of t is, is r, so r of course is a constant here, r cos t, y of t is r sine t, x prime is going to be negative r sine t. y prime will be r cosine t. And oh, I'm also going to need y double prime and x double prime, right? So x double prime will be minus r cosine t. y double prime will be minus r sine t. Okay. So first thing to note, so 
x prime squared plus y prime squared, right? It's going to be r squared sine squared plus r squared cos squared, so it's just r squared, right? Um, so what we're going to get then, is, so here's the curvature. It's going to be um, x prime y double prime. So I notice minus my, okay, so it's going to be um, r squared sine squared t minus minus, minus minus becomes plus r squared cos squared t. Well, isn't that convenient? Over, um, so as we know, that's going to simplify to just r squared on the bottom raised to the power 3 over 2. Okay. Um, so that's just r cubed, that's r squared. We get um, 1 over r. Okay, so the, the curvature of a circle is, is inversely proportional to the radius. And I guess that makes sense, right? Uh, the smaller the circle is, the more you're going to have to curve to go around and stay on the circle, right? A, a very large circle, you know, if you think about the curvature at a particular point for a very large circle, it's... It's not going to curve all that much, right? Um, okay, so that's a cool result. And it's also useful because it's going to help us interpret the, uh, the curvature. We're going to talk about that in the next video.